Jake Sano here. Today I'm gonna be talking to you about ghost crabs. I've been getting people trying to get a hold of me saying, hey man, you know, where did all the ghost crabs go? When I was a kid, there was ghost crabs all over the place. Well, you, uh, I do have a reason for that. And so that, I'm gonna get into that. But before I do, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the ghost crab, because it's a very interesting animal and it's actually a sign of a good healthy beach if you have these on the beach. So let's get into it. So this particular species is the Atlantic ghost crab. Ocipode quadrata is the scientific name for you uh, sciencey people out there. These crabs can actually dig their burrows. So if you're at the beach and you see them scurrying around and then all of a sudden they disappear, uh, it's because they burrow, that's where they live. They can go three to four feet down into the sand. Uh, mostly they're nocturnal, so that means they mostly come out at nighttime. Now, I've seen them a lot when I'm at the beach, even during the daytime, especially if we have sargassum washing in, which is like the seaweed, because they're feeding all around there. Uh, I've also seen them feeding on jellyfish, so if we have a lot of moon jellies washing in, they'll be there like uh, eating up on them. And so I'll see them out during the day for sure, but at nighttime is a great time to be able to see, see them since they're nocturnal. These things can run, you, they typically they're running sideways, like uh, they can go up to 10 miles an hour. So if you think you're gonna try to catch them, uh, think again, they're, they're very fast. Now this one uh, was moving a little slow for me and actually came right up to me. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna get them and then uh, make a little video about them since they are so important. Now these are considered beach scavengers. They'll basically eat anything. And so um, it's good and bad. So they're cleaning up stuff on the beach. You know, they might be eating clams. They could be eating insects. Uh, I've seen them eating on decaying fish that have been washed up like black drum fish. Um, one of the bad things is, is that, and this is natural, but if there are sea turtles that are laying eggs, this is one of their predators. So these things will dig down and they'll start eating the sea turtle eggs that are in there. So these could actually be considered like a predator of the sea turtle. Even though these live on land, they do have to have water. And so they have gills. They have hairs on their legs right here. And those hairs is what allows water to attach to them that they can keep on their gills. And so oftentimes you'll see them, you know, they might be uh, further up on the beach, but then they're gonna go down to the water because they have to be able to keep uh, more, those gills moist. You're mostly gonna see these things uh, at, at the highest peak is really in the summertime. They like warm weather. Now, um, this is later in the year when I'm making this video and uh, it's a little cool out and they're still on the beach. So, you know, I'm thinking January, February is probably when you're gonna see less of them. They're still out there though, uh, but what they, they prefer warmer months. A healthy beach usually has a lot of these. And so you'll um, be on the beach, they could be stuff washing in, uh, they could be mating uh, down at the water, they could be around their burrows just digging in. Uh, they can also drag stuff up from the water to take to their burrows. But if you see these, that's a sign of a healthy beach. Now they have these the cool eyes here. Um, they have these eye sockets that uh, can go down. So watch, if I get close to the eye, boop, it goes down in there and it comes back up. Boop, and that's to be able to protect their eyes. Okay, so why don't we see these anymore on some of the beaches around here? Um, the beaches that are maintained for driving, you will not find very many of these. And the reason is, is because think about if you had a house that was bulldozed over once a week, you probably uh, would stop building there, right? Um, or you wouldn't have time to be able to uh, make a family and you know have everything that you need to be able to have a successful home. It's the same thing with crabs. These crabs uh, dig a hole uh, and whenever it gets turned over or covered up, they die. And so there's been a number of studies that have looked at ghost crabs and what's the main mortality. And it has to do with the holes being covered up and whether that's driving on them whether that's a bulldozer, you know, maintaining the beach, uh, that is what, why we don't see those anymore. So you might see some smaller ones on the really highly maintained beach, but they don't have enough time to, to live to be able to get to be adults. So if you wanna be able to see something like this, go down to like the Padre Island National Seashore. Uh, they don't maintain the beach for driving there, and you'll see a lot of these crabs there. And then there's a number of beaches up and down the coast. Uh, Mustang Island State Park is a great one. 
um, you know, down in South Padre, they've got uh, a, a lot of big stretches of beach that they don't maintain, where you can be able to see a lot of these. Now, I also understand that there's a balance that has to be made with tourism, being able to allow access on the beach. And so I'm not against the, you know, maintaining of the beach, and there's a bunch of different ways that they do it. Some ways are better than others. There has to be areas, especially in Texas, uh, where, you know, it's a law that you'd be able to drive on the beach. So, uh, and, and there's actually like 14 to 15 states in the United States where they allow driving on the beach. So in areas where, um, you know, the public needs to get access and uh, there's uh, uh, something with the economy like tourism uh, that needs to be able to, you know, allow for that, um, that's great. But it's good to have sections of, of the beach that are protected uh, from not having a grading of the beach so that you have these natural animals that are able to survive and show a healthy beach. Um, and since they have a lifespan of about three to four years, uh, you, that's about how big, this, this one's probably about three years old, that's how big you'd think you'd want to see them. <clears throat> now, you're asking me, can we eat these? Uh, you can eat just about anything, but it's rarely that these are eaten. Um, you know, there's not a lot of meat on them. They're scavengers, so the things that they're eating are, are pretty nasty. Uh, you wouldn't want to uh, eat these, especially, I think, Texans probably don't eat them. There might be other parts of the world where there are uh, some cultures where they uh, roast them. But uh, here along Texas coast, uh, you don't find that we eat them. Okay, uh, that's it for this episode of Beach Coming. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to let this guy go and see if he goes in the hole right here. Okay, good luck. Okay, now I guess he's going off that other way. All right, we'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.